welcome to the Yarn and Yarns YouTube channel. My name is Angela and all of the places you can find me should be linked in the description box below this video. Um, I'm most active over on Instagram where you'll find me as both Rainbow Ange and Yarn and Yarns. Uh, Rainbow Ange is kind of my personal account and Yarn and Yarns is an uh, account where I share um, everything related to my small yarn shop. Welcome to the channel or welcome back if you've been here before. Um, I am going to sit and chat to you about what I've been making in the last seven days or so. But I hope you have with you um, your current project and maybe a nice beverage and are able to settle in as we chat for the next 20 minutes, half an hour about the things that I have been making this week. I have got some knitting, some spinning and some crochet to share with you this week. Um, at the end I have got a new prize for our make along to share and we'll do a little bit of general chit chatting as we often do. So I will start I think with spinning this week. Um, I've done a fair bit of spinning this week um, or at least a fair bit of plying. <laughs> All will become clear. <laughs> um, the first bit of spinning and plying uh, that I finished this week uh, was the second half of the um, spin that I showed last week. Uh, so last week I was working on um, this tonal grey. Um, I'm trying to spin a three ply uh, sock yarn uh, from some beautiful fibre that I got from Smith Studio Designs and I got some fibre in the Witch's Pyre colourway which came in two uh, sort of 50 gram braids of separate colours. Um, so this week, um, as you can see, I have spun the second half uh, which is this gorgeous sort of pinky purpley um, colourway. And um, if you were here last week, you might remember that I chatted about the issues that I was having with my singles. Um, when I was chain plying, uh, they broke in several places because they weren't quite strong enough. But I'm happy to report, um, as you can see, I have one full skein um, for the second half of the fibre rather than three sort of mini skeins. Which meant that I managed to uh, make my singles a little bit stronger to hold up to that chain plying process. I spun those up on my e-spinner. Um, so um, all that remains now is for me to cast on at some point. Um, I'm still really trying hard to um, finish some projects before I cast on too many and I do have a project to start this week uh, so this won't get started straight away and I'm still in pursuit of trying to get that perfect three ply fingering weight so there'll be more spinning for socks happening in the future. Uh, this is definitely a heavy fingering sport weight uh, yarn and it's quite dense as well and um, so yeah we'll see how that feels for socks but uh, I'm looking forward to casting this on um, I just need to try and resist for um, the next few weeks at least <laughs> we'll see if I manage that <laughs> Um, and then I also plied up a couple of samples that I'd spun um, at various points over the last few weeks and months. I have two tiny little samples that I'd spun. I think was a little sample that I got from Spin Jones and I spun that up on my supported spindle. Um, and I had um, two tiny little um, samples of fibre. One that I'd spun up on my um, Jalligan and one that I'd spun um, on the spindle that I showed a few weeks ago um, from the Canadian spindle maker, uh, which could be a drop spindle or a supported spindle. And I'd spun uh, a little sample on it using it as a drop spindle. Um, and there were two uh, different colours, green, blue almost, and a lovely sort of lilac-y colour. And I thought they looked quite nice together uh, and they were teeny tiny little samples. So I actually plied them together for the most part. Um, but you might be able to see already in the skein that I had more of the lilac. Um, so I ended up um, two plying um, as much as I could. Um, and then once the uh, sort of sea greeny colour ran out um, I just I'd wound them up into centre pour balls uh, so I just used both ends of the lilac so uh, this is one skein but it's got a sort of solid stripe at the end of it <laughs> uh, so yeah I was happy to um, ply those up and get those finished they've just been hung hanging around as spun singles um, here 
in the craft attic for quite some time so it was nice to to get those uh, actually finished um, and then finally the uh, last thing that I applied this week um, was some more fibre from Smith Studio Designs a braid of fibre um, in the I Can Spin a Rainbow Pastel Edition uh, colourway 100% Corridale and earlier on in the summer um, I decided this would be my first full spin on a supported spindle and because I didn't have a purpose for the fiber in particular I thought it'd be fun to do a little bit of um, playing around and um, making two different types of yarn from the fiber and I was going to make a video on that and I definitely recorded the first bits uh, but I think I must have accidentally deleted them as seems to have happened to a fair bit of my footage over the last few weeks um, so I won't be doing a separate video on that this time um, although this was a really fun experiment so I might do it again um, at some point in the future because I think it would make uh, quite a nice video um, but uh, let me show you um, what I've got I've got two different uh, yarns from the same fibre um, so again this was a mixed braid uh, so there was half like 50 grams of uh, tonal grey again and 50 grams of these uh, really fun pastel colours um, I'm not um, typically drawn to pastels but I really liked this really nice to spin and while I don't have a project in mind for it um, and pastels aren't particularly uh, my go-to colours um, I think it's persuaded me that um, if I saw a particular sort of pastel colour fibre in the future I wouldn't discount it just because it's not my usual sort of colour choice because uh, it was a really fun spin. Um, so I spun up all of the fibre um, and then I divided the two halves of the fibre into half again so I ended up with um, two sort of 25 gram lots of singles of the grey and two sort of 25 gram lots of singles for the pastels and with one half I did a chain ply so a three ply yarn and I ended up with these two skeins and in the sort of pastel side it meant that the colour progression was kept this will be self striping um, when it's knit up um, so that was the sort of first uh, type of yarn the first experiment and then with the second half of the fibre I decided to do a two ply and I took one strand of the grey and one strand of the pastel and applied those two together um, to make a oh, I really love this I, I think this is the skein that's persuaded me that maybe I could work with pastels a little bit <laughs> more in the future I love how the strand of grey has toned and muted down uh, sort of the in your face unicorn sort of candy <laughs> uh, type colours that are in this if I hold those two together I think you'll see uh, what I mean so yeah I think the grey really sort of mutes that down and that gave a really interesting uh, sort of colour effect to me and so I might play around with that a little bit more in the future. be interested to see how that one knits up. I might knit up um, a couple of little swatches just as a sort of final um, end to this experiment uh, before I decide what I might actually knit with those yarns. All of those yarns, although the singles weren't all spun on my e-spinner, I did use my e-spinner to ply um, all of those. Um, I am also working on another plying project on my drop spindle. Um, I don't know if you uh, watched Vlogtober um, but you right, might remember um, in one of the sort of intro bits uh, to Vlogtober my precious cat Newt <laughs> had had some fun with some singles that I'd spun on my Turkish spindle um, so I've got this uh, sort of bag of partly cat trashed singles <laughs> and I decided it was high time to do something um, and sort those out um, so I've actually plied up two of these row lags these row lags were from spindles and stitches um, in the gelato colourway uh, some pinks and browns and I've decided um, there were quite a few um, of these turtles that I spun on my um, Turkish spindle um, that were intact um, even after the cat attack. <laughs> I've plied two of those. Um, I have got um, two more um, that are intact and then I have got um, like a whole bunch of um, sort of cat ravaged <laughs> uh, bits in the bottom of the bag there. Um, so I'm just going to 
I'm chain plying these as I say on my drop spindle and I'm just going to chain ply each of the little bits that I've got um, to try and keep the colour uh, progression and then when I come to knit with these um, I will just take my scraps <laughs> my tiny little mini skeins as they will be um, and try and match up the colours um, when I'm actually doing the knitting uh, rather than trying to um, figure out as I'm plying which colour order this lot go in. I'm also really excited this week that I got back to spinning on my treadle wheel. Um, I have a vintage Haldane Shetland wheel and it's the first time that I have um, spun on that wheel since or probably about two months ago when I had that attack of sciatica. If uh, you've been watching for a while you might remember um, that I was in pain for a few weeks <laughs> and it meant that I wasn't able to sit and treadle um, at my spinning wheel. Um, on that wheel I'm spinning a fleece, my first ever um, washed and prepped fleece. Um, it's a Jacob Ryland fleece uh, that was sent to me by my lovely friend Charlie. Hi Charlie if you're watching. Um, and I'm getting back to spinning that and I've almost spun a bobbin's worth of fibre on that this week and I'll just pop in a little clip um, showing the bobbin it's on the wheel downstairs so I, I didn't want to take it off as it's uh, sort of in progress and I also remembered um, quite a few weeks ago um, someone asked me to show my spinning wheel uh, my Haldane and I completely forgot so um, apologies if that was you um, but I got a little bit of a video clip to uh, show my wheel as well as the um, fibre that's on it at the moment. That fibre I'm spinning long draw to make a woolen spun yarn um, so it will be hopefully quite a light and fluffy yarn and actually um, in a bag next to me here I've got some skeins uh, that I've already spun up um, earlier on um, from that fleece. Um, as you can see there was a couple of um, different colour variations in that fleece. Uh, I ha have got a couple of skeins of this darker colour, one of this light, um, but the, ma the majority of the rest of the fibre that I've got is going to look more like these two um, in the sort of mid colour range with a few lighter speckles. Uh, so yeah I'm looking forward to spinning the rest of that fleece to see how much I've got. This is not going to be my best spin ever. Um, as I say it's my first this was my first attempt at fibre prep and I think I put some short fibres um, into my Rolex that maybe I would pick out in the future as I get more experienced with sorting a fleece um, but I'm hoping that uh, between this and some other sort of um, spins that I've got planned for the future I might come up with a sweater quantity. Um, there's enough colour variation um, in these I think to make um, for an interesting bit of colour work perhaps um, around the yoke or maybe around the sleeves, um, we'll see. Um, but I've still got quite a lot to spin up on that so that's still a long term project. I will show you next and I have been working away on my Babette blanket and I posted a picture of this on Instagram yesterday and my goal this week was to join all of the squares and join all of the sections and I'm happy to say that I have achieved that goal so yay <laughs> everything has been joined and I'm not going to be able to show you uh, this in its entirety but I'll just kind of wiggle it oops, around in front of the camera for a while just so you get the idea of what this is looking like. <laughs> I started this 18 months, two years ago maybe, and it's been my sort of on and off crochet project since then. Um, it's crocheted from some Camo Rose DK yarn, although this is very, very fine yarn, I would say it was more like a four ply. Um, I picked the original pattern, uses lots of different colours of Koi Goo um, sock yarn, um, but I picked a more limited colour palette um, to make my squares. 
Um, so now I've just got to add some border rows. I think there's maybe three or four border rows um, if you work to the pattern. Um, I have this much yarn left and I'm not convinced that this grey will get me one border around the blanket and it might be tight for even these. Maybe I'll get border rows out of these two, possibly not these two. This blanket is effectively a square um, so my plan is to start with this one, maybe I'll weigh it, um, work one um, side of my square, weigh it again to see um, whether I've used a quarter. If I've used more than a quarter of what I've got, then I'll know not to carry on, I'll just rip it back. Um, and then that will give me an idea um, of how much yarn I'm going to need. Um, my backup plan, because I think this will need a couple of border rows, um, but if I don't have enough um, in these, I don't want to purchase more yarn. I purchased my yarn from Loop of London, um, but I think I will get away with adding in some Baramu Pip colour work, which I stock in the shop. And um, I've got a similar, though not the same, orange. Um, I've definitely got uh, some darker blues. I think I'll be able to pick out a few colours um, that will work well with the colours that I've already got in my blanket um, to finish off the border rows if I need to. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be um, a making priority um, for the next week. Um, I also have woven in all of my ends. Um, so it is literally just the border rows to go now. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this time next week, I will be showing off a finished blanket. And then for knitting this week, I have a finished object and a work in progress to show you. Uh, so I have finished my test knit shawl. Um, I've been working on the Crescent Moon shawl, um, testing uh, that pattern for Ellie of Curio Stitches. And last week I was on the border section um, of this shawl and I managed to get that finished. It's just completely impossible for me to show this off um, in a good light um, when I'm holding it up. Uh, because of my colour choice and because of the lighting as well. Um, so I might pop a little bit of video in here um, just showing you uh, what the border looks like and how nicely uh, that contrasts with the garter stitch uh, which makes up the majority of this shawl. Uh, um, I do need to block this still and this will benefit from a blocking. Um, there's no border as such on the edge of um, this applied edging um, so it is curling in quite a lot so um, I need to um, give it a bit of a vigorous block to flatten that out uh, and my aim is to try and get that done this week at some point um, I still haven't blocked the rating for rain shawl either. Brings my whip count down to 15 for anyone who is keeping tally um, however I do need to cast on um, a project and I'll probably do it this week um, I'm going to make some socks for my mother-in-law for Christmas and um, we're out of lockdown here in Wales now so I'll be starting back um, in the shop on Thursday um, so I'll need a nice easy project to take with me to the shop so um, I think I'll be casting on those socks so um, until I get my Babette blanket done I'll be going up back up to 16. <laughs> the next project that I'm going to show you um, is one that hasn't been seen here for a while although I have been working on it on and off. Um, this is the Normal People sweater, um, a pattern by Charlie Button Designs and um, I started this as one of my 12 cast-ons last year and I've been mainly knitting it on sort of zoom chats with some of my knitting chums um, but we haven't really had any chats for a little while um, so progress slowed down but I haven't shown you this for ages anyway um, but I have it's a just a really simple um, cozy um, turtleneck sweater and I have it's a the design is for a cropped sweater um, I started with a provisional cast on um, as you can see I have now got the bulk of the body um, both of the sleeves and the turtleneck done um, but I do need to go back and add a fair amount of length to this I think um, as it stands at the moment um, on me it really only does just kind of cover my bust so I need to add um, a little bit of length to it before I put on the ribbing and I've still got plenty of yarn left I'm using Debbie Bliss 
um what is it um blue faced leicester aaron um which is a long discontinued yarn um, but i had it in my stash um in this beautiful sort of tealy greeny blue colorway uh, last time i showed you this i was here i'd only knit um the start of the body in the round and then you split and knit the top flat um so since you last saw this i've knitted um the top of the body the neck and the sleeves uh, so yeah i needed to pop this back um onto uh, a working needle and get going um i've measured i think i want to add another five or six inches if i've got enough yarn um to this before it's finished but it's just simple round and round stocking stitch so um, I'm going to get this back on the needles this week and try and make a really good dent um, in that over the coming week so yeah over the next week my priorities will be the normal people sweater and the babette blanket as well as casting on um, for my final gift knit I'm not making too many gifts this year um, so I've already done socks for my dad I've done socks for my father-in-law um, so just socks for mother-in-law to go but that's the extent of my making that I can show you this week. Um, I did actually make two um, small things on Sunday, um, a surprise little gift for a friend and also I made the gnome which was one of the prizes for our uh, Vlogtober knit along. I'm going to wait until I need to contact uh, Kathy to um, get her details of where to send the gnome. Both of those packages have been received. Um, I actually made a little vlog on Sunday of me making both of those small objects. So um, if I manage to keep that footage and not accidentally delete it, <laughs> um, then I'll have a little making vlog um, at some point um, soon, hopefully. I have a new prize to chat about for our TGIF make along. Um, if you are new to the channel, I'm hosting a make along from now until the end of the year with the lovely Caroline of the Colourful Creativity channel and the idea is to just finish as many of your projects um, as you are able to want to um, between now and the 31st of December um, and we're calling it the TGIF Cal uh, the thank goodness it's finished or thank god it's finished and it's really a motivator for me <laughs> to try and get some of my works in progress off the needles before I have some fun casting on some new things in December. Um, I've already announced quite a few lovely prizes and I'll go over them again um, at some point later on in the month just to refresh uh, our memories but um, to enter the make along you just need to finish something get anything off of your needles hooks um, spindles looms um, sewing table anything counts really any craft um, but my lovely friend Charlie who I've already mentioned a couple of times in this episode um, the gifter of fleeces <laughs> and the designer of sweaters um, also has her own lovely yarn brand uh, Charlie Buttons Yarns and she has donated uh, some naturally dyed mini skeins to the make along. Um, I don't have them in my hands yet uh, but I'll pop a picture up on the screen and I stuck Charlie's Yarns over on the Yarn and Yarns website so if you can't wait um, to see if you are a winner to get your hands on some of those minis um, then they will be in the Yarn and Yarns shop soon um, and there are already some lovely beautiful yarns from Charlie um, available over in the shop. Uh, so thank you so much uh, for that prize donation Charlie that's very kind of you um, to enter the make along you just need to post a picture of your finished object either in the Ravelry thread which will be linked below um, if you're not using Ravelry you can post your photos over on Instagram um, using the TGIF Cal hashtag um, I've also seen a few people use TGIF Mal which is fine um, I'll make sure I check both of those and you, um, if you're not using social media um, in either of those formats, um, you could also email either myself or Caroline with your finished object photos. Yeah, that's everything for the making and the make along. Uh, so just time for a quick chat and catch up before I finish off the episode. Um, how are you doing this week? Um, I'm having a bit of an off day, if I'm being completely honest. Um, I've had another couple of days where I haven't slept the best. And um, a couple of 
small things have gone wrong work-wise today um which in the scheme of things wouldn't normally bother me but have kind of really rubbed me up the wrong way <laughs> no one's fault no you know nothing major just those little things that when you're having a normal day or a good day uh, wouldn't even you know put you off your stride in the slightest but when you're feeling a bit low and a little bit worn out um, sometimes the little things grate on you don't they um, so yeah that's the kind of day I'm having I'm not saying that for because I want like sympathy or anything like that um, I just thought it'd be worth mentioning because um, I feel like I'm a bit low energy today in case that that does come across in the video um, but I'll be okay um, it's just just one of those days <laughs> we all have them um, I almost didn't record today um, but I thought what a better way to try and lift my mood than to come and spend time with the lovely yarn and yarns community because that always does cheer me up um, we are out of lockdown here in Wales now um, as England start theirs um, so I'll be back working in the shop uh, Thursday and Friday this week um, I think I'm not sure how I feel about that and I think maybe that's partly what's been weighing on my mind but we'll We'll see how things go. I'm sure the week will be fine. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to getting stuck into my making plans this week. Um, as I say, I want to try and get that babette finished and make some progress on my normal people sweater. With making some inroads on my wheel spin, I'd like to start a new spin on my e-spinner as well. And I'd also like to thread up my loom at some point. I still haven't thread up the new loom the new loom that I got yet honestly I don't know where time disappears to <laughs> please do let me know um, in the comments below how your week's been um, what you're making and don't forget to keep tagging me on Instagram or posting your objects for our TGIF Mal over in the Ravelry group so until we get to spend time together again I hope you get to do some of the things that you enjoy great big willy hugs to you all bye for now